Katie Azevedo here from schoolhabits.com. Today's video is going to be all about note taking. Note taking during a lecture class. Not note taking for, you know, from a book or from a textbook. That's going to be the subject of a later blog post or a future video. But today is for when you are in class struggling to stay along at the rate of your teacher speaking. I know we've all been there when your teacher talks a mile a minute and it's really hard for you to listen, to process the information, and write that stuff down all at the same time. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five strategies for taking notes during a lecture class. Number one, pick your tool and find your note-taking style. So for some people that's gonna mean you're gonna be using pen and paper. I'm referring to myself mostly, I love pen and paper, so if that's you, then in, and that's the type of, you know, you write things down, then I would suggest probably a notebook, maybe not so much loose leaf paper, you might be losing it and getting disorganized, which is a future step we'll talk about. But it also might depend on your class. It might, um, you might be using tech, so that's a tablet or an iPad. I know some of my students, I'm actually currently a, um, a full-time professional tutor and a lot of my students in school these days are required to use iPads in school. So if that sounds like you, then maybe that's how you're going to be taking your notes to record them during class. It might be too that you're going to use a combination of both, depending on the class. If it's something straightforward like a history or a literature class or something like that, then maybe you could get by really quickly using your iPad or tablet, you just type it in. Um, I know there's some really great apps that are out there. Some of them are free. Most of them are free. Um, Notability is one of them. Paper is another app. I believe those ones are free or there might be a small charge, something like that. Um, but those apps you can either type in the text or you can use your finger. Um, and kind of like free form write it and it, there's you know um, recognition software it knows what you're writing or you might use a stylus or, but some people just prefer to take their notes that way um, if you are taking notes for maybe like a science class something where there's going to be diagrams um, more complex images um, Venn diagrams charts things like that then maybe you want to use um, notepad and paper for those ones because it can be a little bit complex figuring out how to use draw diagrams on your apps but once you figure it out I'm sure you'll be fine but maybe it's something where you use both either way you've got to figure out what type of student you are figure out what method works best for you um, and go with it there's also as a backup so some of my students have a lot of difficulty paying attention to this te teacher speaking at the same time that they're frantically trying to take notes if that sounds like you, then there is the possibility of using your phone as a recorder. Or you can get a separate recorder too, but everyone has a phone with them, so maybe. Just use um, a recording app to record your lecture. And I'd caution you, if you're highly distractible um, and you find yourself thinking, oh, I'll just record the lecture and I'll kind of just zone out with my eyes open during class and listen to the notes later, then I would be really careful about this technique. Using a recorder is for a backup only. So you should be recording the notes primarily in your notebook or in your app at the same time that you have it recording in the background. So later on, if you miss something, you'll have it recorded. I'd probably recommend checking with your teacher to see if he or she allows that in class. I'm sure you know, if you, if you explain what your problem is and your difficulty with taking notes, then your teacher shouldn't have any problem. Um, if he or she does have problem, you know, having you record their class, hide your phone perhaps. I'm sure there's a way around it, but just try speaking to your teacher. Um, so that is step one. Find your note-taking style and pick your tool. So step two of the five steps for taking notes during class is to capture the information. And this is when you're actually sitting in the classroom trying to listen to your teacher talk and you're frantically trying to keep up with what he or she is saying. So the most important step, at this point you've picked your tool. You either have your app open or your notebook open to a fresh page. It sounds basic, but sometimes we forget the basics. You always start with dating at the top of your page, put the date, and put what the class is going to be about. You don't just put biology at the top of the note page because that's really going to tell you nothing about what the class is about. So when you have to go back and study um, for a test or you get to have an open notebook test, if it just says biology at the top, that's not going to be very helpful. Um, sometimes you might you know, be lucky and your teacher says, okay class, today we're talking about whatever. Um, and then that would be what you would title the top of your page. However, if your teacher 
doesn't start the class with explaining what the class is going to be about, then just ask. No harm in just raising your hand saying, what are we talking about today? And that's what you put at the top of your page. From there on, so you don't need to be recording every word your teacher says because sometimes he or she is going to transgress into just like a conversation with you guys. But when the, the focus of the class is he or she is using a, um, a blackboard or a smartboard or a chalkboard, I don't even know if there's chalkboards anymore, um, but it, when the, the focus of the class is actually your teacher relaying you the information, this is when you're ready to go. I would highly recommend for taking notes, whether it's in an app or on your notepad, um, your notebook is to use bullets. Bullets are a very efficient way to record notes and efficiency is so key when you're taking notes during class because you need to write quickly. Um, chances are your teacher talks a mile a minute. I know all my teachers did. So you need to be able to write at a pace um, that's somewhat comparable to someone speaking. So bullets, what are bullets? Bullets are an awesome way to organize information quickly. So the way the bullets work, you, most of you probably already know this, but if not, I'll go through it quickly. You start with the largest idea at the top, and as the topic narrows or changes, you get smaller in your bullet. So for example, your class is going to be about um, the reproductive plants, the reproductive habits of plants or something like that. It's been a while since I've been in biology, so please don't fact check me. I'm not a science person. But so that would be the title of your page, reproductive plants or something, or reproduction in plants. Your first bullet could be the parts of a female plant. So that would be your first bullet after you've titled your page. And then from there on out, under that, so it might be A, and your main bullet, you know, the title of your bullet is female reproduction. Uh, female plant reproduction. And under that, you have another bullet in which you're listing all the different parts of a female plant? Don't even ask me. I don't even remember, but I'm sure you could Google it. But, and you know, perhaps your teacher gives you the name of the, the flower parts and then explains what they look like, how to find them, what their role is. So that's where in each of those smaller bullet points, that's where you'd fill in the details about the parts of the female flower. And then perhaps your teacher moves on to the reproductive parts of a male flower. There are male and female flowers, and I know that there's some flowers that are both, but whatever. For the sake of me pretending like I know anything about science, we're going to do male and female. So let's say your next bullet is about the parts of a male flower. So there will be male flower parts, and under that in smaller bullet points, you can use bullets, stars, hearts, whatever I don't know, you want to use, then you list the parts, the male parts of the flower, perhaps what they look like, what their roles are, what their function are, definitions of words. So when you keep going in this manner, either creating a new bullet point or a new subtitle every time your teacher changes the topic. Or, you know, one key tip here is if you're not sure whether to start a new bullet point, always err on the side of just create a new bullet point. It's better to have too many than, than too few. Um, another time-saving technique for when you're taking notes and when you're making bullets, a bulleted sort of note system, is use abbreviations. So let's say, for example, you're in the same biology class and your teacher uses the word heterogeneous over and over and over again. That word is like 100 letters long. It's going to take you a long time to write. So perhaps you're going to come up with your own abbreviations for these long types of words, like het g or hetero g. So every time you use that word, instead of spelling out a bazillion letters, you use your little abbreviations. Um, also, this is the time when you want to listen very closely to your teacher's cues. If your teacher um, says something like, okay class, so what this all means is, okay, then that's probably where you want to check in and really try to write down verbatim, if you can, everything that he or she is saying. Um, all right, class, and you know, and this is the clincher. The whole point of this is, and then it's followed by something. That's your cue that what's happening is worth writing down in your notebook. And like I already said, you don't need to be writing everything, you know, that your teacher says, because sometimes there's dialogue, and she asks the class questions, or a student might ask a question, and if it's not completely relevant to the lesson, it might not be worth your time writing down. Another key strategy would be to use question marks. So I would suggest using question marks, like an actual little question mark, in your notes, is if your teacher says something and you missed it for whatever reason. 
um, they were speaking too fast, or you zoned out for a second, we've all done that, or you just literally didn't understand what your teacher was saying, or you didn't hear it for whatever reason, mark in your notebook or in your app or whatever you're using that there's something missing. The best scenario in this case would be to actually raise your hand, pause the class, everyone could probably use a break anyway, and ask the teacher to repeat his or her point. If that's not possible, if it's a huge lecture class with 100 kids and your teacher is just like, you know, going right to the end without pauses, then make sure you write that question mark in your notebook so you know to come back to that later, which is definitely going to be in step three, which we'll get to, and you're going to fill in that information later. But this tells you that something is missing and it's incomplete. Um, another key strategy to help save time is don't worry about grammar. I'm a grammar fanatic. I love grammar. I don't order anything off a menu if it has a comma used wrong in it. I know that's crazy. Um, but this is not the point, the, the time and place to be worried if you have a semicolon used properly. Um, incomplete sentences is faster than complete sentences. The whole point of taking notes in this bullet system is to make sure that it makes sense for you. So if you can write in a fragmented way with incomplete sentences and ridiculous grammar, but it makes sense to you, then that's excellent. But if you're writing in that way and later on when you go back to check your notes or to study from your notes or in step three to review your notes, and if your notes don't make sense for you, then you're probably gonna need to complete your sentences a little bit more during the capturing phase. Um, some people like to use a, a color-coded system. If that um, complicates things for you, then don't worry about it. Just use your pen or your stylus if you're on your app. Um, but some people you know, enjoy organizing things by color. So one way that you could do this is have a red pen for things that um, your teacher says that you think are important or a blue pen for any word that you're going to be providing a definition for. So if your teacher starts the class off with, you know, definitions of words, maybe those all go in blue and that's your system that every time you see something written in blue, you know, it's a word and a definition. If it's a process, you know, we're talking about biology and the crossbreeding of flowers, that's a process, maybe that goes in green. The capturing phase is very important. Now we are at step three of the five steps for better note taking. And this is so important. I know I say that before every step, but this one is so important too. And um, this is when you review and fill in the gaps. So you take your notes during class, but in step two when you're capturing information, but if you think about it, that's when you're going as fast as possible with incomplete sentences and abbreviations and question marks indicating that they're missing information. So step three is when you go back and you fill in those gaps, where you complete your sentences, where you actually spell out all those abbreviated terms like heterogeneous, you actually write them out. So this can work a couple different ways. If you are using pen and paper um, during class when you're actually in the capturing phase, then per, and you've, let's say you've determined that that is who you are, you're a pen and paper person and you're not gonna use tech at all, that's fine. I would highly recommend that in step three, which is reviewing and filling in the gaps, you rewrite your notes. Um, you can use pen and paper, that's fine, but some people at this point, even if you're capturing your notes on pen and paper in class, you might actually type up your notes at this point. Now I should probably backtrack a little bit and say that step three, ideally is happening the same day you take your notes because so much can be forgotten after a couple hours but let alone a 24-hour period. So you know in a perfect world you're taking your notes during the day in school and you come home at some point right after school, after practice, whatever you have going on. After that when you're doing your homework you plan time for this step. This is when you go back in and you make your notes excellent and perfect. So if you're in this editing phase and you're looking at your, your notes and you realize that in class you created a new bullet because you weren't sure if it was a transition or not, and let's say now upon review you realize that, that information in your new bulleted list actually belongs in the bullet above, then that's where you make those changes, that's where you make those edits. Um, this is also where you go back in and you look at all your question marks that you indicated during class because remember those question marks meant some, you missed something or something was unclear. So to fill in this information, I mean you could do it a couple different ways. My favorite is Google. Google knows everything. You could totally Google cross this plant with that plant and what do you get and then Google will probably tell you it's a hybrid. Um, if that's the information that was missing. If it's a definition for a word, you could Google that. 
Of course, your textbook would probably be a good spot too. I'm sure your teacher started your class off saying, okay, this is chapter two. If not, you should have asked, right? Back in um, step two, when you're capturing the information, you gotta know what the class is about. Um, but this is the part where you, you, you fill in that information that you're missing and you fill it in as completely as possible. If you were me, if I were you, then this is when I'd go back in and fix all my grammar because that would just bother the heck out of me. But if you want to keep your semicolons misused, that's fine if you even use semicolons anyway. Two benefits of this um, third step here. Number one, obviously you have amazing, clean, perfect, complete notes um, that are gonna be so much easier when you have to go back and study. You're gonna be so grateful for this extra work, which realistically doesn't take that much time when you're going back and typing these up. Um, you're gonna be so grateful that you have these notes that end up being an amazing study guide. And you could probably sell them for $2 a page too, but uh, to your friends, but I'm just saying. Because actually the way that the human brain works, it's so neat, but the more we revisit information, the more we come back to it, the more frequently we look at it and think about it, the more we learn it. That's just like a human awesome fact type thing about the neurons in our brains. Really scientific, you can tell here. But it's true, you know, the first time you're hearing this information from your teacher in class, there's probably not too much processing going on. You're just capturing it and recording it. There might be some concepts that you have, like a, aha, I get that type of moment, but a lot of it is new information and your brain doesn't actually have a spot to store it yet. But the more you come back to this information, the more it kind of develops these, you know, the neurons around this information develop kind of little pockets in your brain and it knows where to store this information. I know that's not super scientific sounding, but trust me, I know it, it's true, okay? So when you're going back on the step three and you're typing up your notes, you're rereading them, you're um, thinking about the information that you collected for the first time that day, that whole learning process is starting and that is so key and you're gonna find that in step five, that step's gonna be so much easier for you once you've already started this learning process. The neurons in your brain are already starting to connect, so it's gonna know how to access this information when you actually need it. Um, so that is step three. Take this step seriously. It's easy to say, well, I'll get to it tomorrow, but tomorrow you might not be able to complete those sentences as accurately um, and as comprehensively as if you had done it the day that this, you know, that you took the notes. You will have time if you make it, if you find it. Come on, we, we make time. Um, this is, is a really important step. So that is three. Review your notes and fill in the gaps. All right, so that brings us to step four, which is organize and store your notes. So let's say that you are doing all of your note taking on pen and paper. And in the step three, which is, you know, review your notes and fill in the gaps, let's say you either rewrote your notes on a new sheet of paper or you typed them up. At this point, you probably have loose leaf paper hanging around, whether you typed them up and printed them out, or you have you know, paper in your notebook, but everything now needs to have a place for you to be able to find it later. If you have awesome notes, but they're all over the place, not really that awesome. This is just basic organizing, you know? Um, it depends on what type of classes you take or how many classes you have, or whether you're in middle school or high school or college, but I would recommend three ring notebooks. That's the simplest way to, you know, to keep your things organized because you can sort of shift things around and move them around um, as tests come up and as you don't need information anymore, you can just kind of get it out of there. So if you have a lot of classes and a lot of notes, um, it might make sense for you to have a separate three ring notebook for each class. If you don't take a lot of notes, um, then you might be able to get by with one notebook so you don't have to worry about you know, bringing the wrong one home or bringing the wrong one to class. But if you have one giant notebook for all your classes, you know, use tab dividers, that's simple enough. If you're using an app, it depends on what app you're using, if it's um, Notability or Paper, which are two that I had recommended. I don't know if I'd recommend them, but I know that my, some of my students use them. I think those are actually highly recommended. But whatever, you've got your app. Um, then I'm sure that there's some way to store those notes in a way that makes sense in like a folder system. Um, just make sure that you store them and title your folders in your app in a way that makes sense for you probably by class, so bio, English, history, chem, whatever you have going on. 
Um, and then within those folders, the more specific you can be, is probably, you know, the, the more organized you'll end up at the end. However works for you is what's gonna work. If it's not working for you, chances are it's not working, so you have to find a better method. Um, just keeping information together. Uh, so if your teacher hands you a worksheet or you have a quiz that's eventually gonna be a great way to study for a future test, that's where having a three ring notebook can come in handy because you, not all your notes are gonna be something that you've written down. Sometimes your notes are gonna come from um, a worksheet or something like that. So you can store the worksheet in the relevant spot, the spot that makes sense in the right binder or the right tab, whatever. But keep these organized. Um, whether you have a once a day sort of check-in point where you go through, once a day might be a lot, maybe once a week. Um, once a month is too infrequent, you're gonna end up disorganized. Um, but once a week, I'd say go back in and do a little bit of cleaning. If you have a worksheet and it ended up not being helpful or um, something that you know you don't, you, you don't need or previous versions and messy versions of notes, get them out of there. In your notebook or in your app, keep only the most excellent, awesome material because that's all you're gonna need to study. So that is step four, which is organize and store your notes. All right, so here we are at the fifth and final step of the five steps for awesome note taking. And this is to actually study. You, the whole point of taking notes is that you're gonna use them at some point, um, probably for a quiz or a test or a final exam. So step five is study. So you figured out a system that works for you, you're using paper or pen, and you wrote your notes efficiently and quickly during class, and then the same day you took your notes, you came home and you reviewed them and you filled in the gaps, and then you put them in the, their proper place, kept them organized and neat. Step five shouldn't be all that complicated. Of course, studying takes time and you have to find the time to do that, and you will, if you care, you will. Um, but at this point, it's gonna be simpler because all in the, in the right spot, um, they make sense to you. You're not gonna be looking back at notes that you took three weeks ago saying, crap, or what did I even mean when I wrote this? Sometimes I go back, truthfully, and I look at my notes um, not my school notes at this point in my life, even like a grocery list. I'm like, what did I write down? I don't even know my own abbreviations sometimes. But you're not gonna have that problem in step five when you're reviewing your notes because you're working from awesome notes because you made them awesome in step three and you kept them awesome in step four. Um, so let's recap really quickly. Five steps to awesome note taking. They should be ingrained in your head at this point because I feel like I've repeated them a bazillion times, but here we go. Number one, Find your style, pick your tool, pen and paper, tech, perhaps a combination of both. Take out the recorder if you need it. Just don't zone out during class, let the recorder do the work for you. Not gonna work. Number two, capture your notes as quickly as possible. As your teacher's speaking, try to be efficient, use abbreviations, use question marks, and use a bullet note system. If you're a little confused on how to work bullets, Google that, I'm sure there's plenty out there. Um, number three, review your notes, fill in the gaps, clean them up, keep them awesome, edit them, you know, whether you're retyping them or you're um, rewriting them if you're glued to your pen and paper, but fill in the gaps and make your notes insensible to you. Number four, organize and store. Simple step. You like binders, use binders. You like tech, use tech folders. All right, they could fall out, but if that's how you work, that's how you work. It's all about making something that works for you. And number five, study. So if there's anything I have talked about here that you want me to explain further, let me know on schoolhabits.com. That's where you can contact me. And seriously, if I can explain anything or help you with any other of your school struggles, I am here to help you build the habits that you need to get you through school. So just contact me. Let me know. Thank you for listening. Good luck.